And on the other hand, right, we have inventors here in America who are bringing us to Mars. So, <laughs> yes. you know, how do you view yeah. how do you view this new almost transhumanist spin on history? I mean, we're surely in a different decade than 2010. Right. Well, not even decade as in the year, but we're in a different universe <laughs> than 2010, right? Well, 2010, we were just starting to get regular cell phones. Sure. You know, teenagers well, were exposed. You know, it's funny you should say that because uh, I tell people this all the time hmm. and they scratch their heads like I'm from Mars. And I'm not. <laughs> I'm from Staten Island. <laughs> but but uh, when I went to college, yeah. there were no cell phones. Right. There were no computers. You know, I had an old typewriter. And when I came home for Christmas, I asked my mother to get me another ribbon for the typewriter. You know, uh, when some I, I lived in a dormitory that had one phone in the lobby. Right. And when somebody called you, if you're on the third floor, they would say, Mickey, phone call. And if you were lucky <laughs> enough to hear them, you came down to that phone. Wow. So technology ha has advanced so far, mm -hmm. not, not only with phones and computers and everything else, but especially in our industry. Right. You know, now we're at 3D this. Three, I mean, the first 250 episodes we did was standard definition. Wow. Which in many cases is unheard of today. Right. Everything is HD or right. more. Or more. Right. <laughs> 4K, 8K. Yeah. <laughs> so the advances are good for the industry because mm. the quality's off the charts good. Right. You know, we used to use, even when I was at Fox, three-quarter tape. Right. You know, which was about that big, and you would carry that big sound. The, yeah. the camera must have weighed 75 pounds. <laughs> Old Ikigamis. You had to be strong to carry those. Mm -hmm. So the advancement is has been phenomenal. It's it's better for the... I mean, I mean, today everyone's on a cell phone 24-7. But that's my question. Is, we didn't have that. We had to deal with people face right. to face. So how, how much, how alienated do you feel that this time period is yeah. post cell phones? It's very aggravating. To it's very aggravating. You know, it's even, even if you wanted something done um, aside from, from technology, you just wanted to talk to a person. Right. You know, yeah. I forget why, who it was or where. I was trying to get, I just wanted to talk to a person about an issue I had with something. And you can't get to a person anymore. It's true. It's true. You know, you go from one <coughs> answer machine to another answer, right. this and that. But you, you, it's tough to talk to a person. And I notice now it's getting to the point on a lot of the bills that you get. Mm -hmm. They don't even have phone numbers on it. It's true. <laughs> There's no way to contact. So now, you know, you have to be an investigative reporter <laughs> right? to talk to somebody. Right. If you're lucky. Yeah. I mean, so I don't like that. Right. Because I'm a people person. I've always been, you know, and, you know, a lot of times with even with the email, I notice that people will take the liberty to be bold in an email. But mm -hmm. if you talk to them face to face, they lose that boldness. Mm. You can't respect that, right? No. I, I don't anyway. No. You know, you want to look into a person's eye, right. and see what kind of character they have, and deal with them one-on-one -on -one as, as a person. Of course. Yeah, I don't want to hide behind a keyboard when I'm corresponding with people. Yeah. It's an interesting shield. Yeah, yeah it is. Right? It's like even though we have more access to people individually. Yes. You can hide behind a keyboard. You can hide behind your Instagram yes, posts. You can. Yes, right? you can. And this is an interesting kind of like dysmorphia that yes. relationship that i have with modernity mm -hmm. right where there's mm -hmm. one of my favorite songs is billy joel strangers yep. right we all have a face we take them out to show ourselves when yep. everyone is gone right every person has a face and now you know i look at this as the golden era mm -hmm. of duplicity right the golden era of you can project something completely unfamiliar with your sense of self and i wonder while you're interviewing, depending on what age group the interviewee is yeah. for you, do you see any sort of like artifacts of that in your conversations? Well, it's when we, we had the pandemic. Yeah. That's a good example. We tried to do Zoom. I, yeah. ha I hated it. Yeah, I can't do it. You know, and they say, you know, <laughs> you know I have a mentor, Bill McCreary. He mm -hmm. passed away about a year ago. And, and, and what he used to tell me all the time, and you'll appreciate this as an interviewer, mm -hmm. 
And you're very good at it, by the way. Thank you very much. And, and he used to say, <laughs> Mickey, whatever you do as an interviewer, never let them see you sweat. <laughs> <laughs> It's not easy. I said, Bill, is that a skill set? He said, you better believe it. <laughs> and, and yeah. you know, what does he mean by that? Well, sometimes, you know, <clears throat> you may ask a question that the person you're interviewing is not comfortable with. Mm. And they may get a little agitated yep. with that. Now, how you handle that agitation can determine the rest of that interview. Right. So I think what he meant was never let them see you sweat. You know, when you run into the to the barricades like that, uh, it is a skill set. How do you get around that and move on? Right. You know, and we all have our, our ways of doing that. You know, but huh. always smile. Yeah. That's it. And move on. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting kind of like meta yeah. concept on interviewing in general, right? Because the interviewee yeah. surely is the substance. Sure. But the interviewer is the form. Yes. And only the thing that's actually of concern, mm -hmm. the the idea of what's being created, the product itself, yeah. is a continuum between those two people. Right. I've always thought of myself as the interviewer, yeah. as a batting practice pitcher. Oh. And I want to groove my fastball right down the middle of the plate so that the guest hits home run after home run. <laughs> and you're like, I got it. I want to make them look good. Right. Not me. I'm the interviewer. Yeah. You see? So that's that. That's how I go into an interview. I'm a good batting practice pitcher. I'm going to groove that. I love that. Ball. That's so yeah. accurate. And another mistake a lot of interviewers make, and I write about this in the book too, is why are people listening? Hmm. Uh, yeah, you have to ask yourself that question. And in most cases, they want to hear the guest you have. They want to hear about Randy Edelman's life. Right. But a lot of interviewers make the mistakes of injecting their own personal an anecdotes. Uh, personal stuff about themselves yeah you know like i i, I was saying to so, let's say some i'm interviewing somebody and uh, they mentioned joe namath mm -hmm. right well i stop them i'm the interviewer yeah and i say yeah joe i just met him in the bathroom at the meadowlands during a jet game last season nobody cares <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nobody cares <laughs> they don't care they want information about joe namath right you know keep your eye on the prize and what you're trying to do and stop in, you know they don't care about you you're the interviewer yeah so a lot of a lot of interview, interviewers make that mistake and a lot of times the guest is sitting there saying well when is he going to get back to me hmm. and ask me questions that's why i thought i was here not to hear about his life you know yeah that's a little self-centered right yeah a little bit 